together combined. We're back. So for those of you who don't know, LCS is back following the walkout vote. The league was postponed to have discussions with the LCS Players Association. The LCS and the PA came to an agreement, which means we are back and ready to kick off summer split. Also, thank you for tuning in on a Wednesday. If you Wednesdays. haven't looked at the calendar, but for some reason are on the stream, you will notice that we are currently on a Wednesday, uh, which will be the case for the entire summer split regular season. This reformatted schedule accounts for the two week delay to hold the same number of regular season games as spring split. So we will be playing a double round robin best of one format still. It's just gonna take place with three game days per week across six weeks instead of the previous schedule. Meaning what you see on the screen, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday will be happening six weeks in a row. He's lying to you. This is a day one, week one rebroadcast of Spring Split. So if you're watching right now, <laughs> we just, it's actually small Thursday. Like, <laughs> it's actually just Thursday. Pull up the tweets of all the players who said like, oh, we like congrats on the week one win when it was off or something. Exactly. So that was all off broadcast. Yeah, so, kicking off luck. with the rematch of the Summer Split Final or the MSI, whatever you want to call that game. MSI quarterfinals, upper bracket or lower bracket? Lower bracket something. Lower yeah. bracket. Uh, TLTSM, Immortals yeah. Dig, EG Energy, and FlyQuest Hunter Thieves is today, which brings us to the topic that we have to do. Uh oh. Ugh. Contractually. Contractually My least obligated favorite power part rankings. of being on broadcast. I'll do power rankings because I feel like they start conversation, but we have power rankings from a lot of people. Up oh, on a big board. We had it's all Emily now. Raz fans, Jat, Rafa, Azale, Mark, Gabby, and Flowers. Wow. Whoa. I, yeah, obviously your eye is initially drawn to that gold on top from Rafa. That is not just above FlyQuest, which a lot of us have, but also above Cloud9. That's a lot of faith. Yeah. That's a lot of faith. Especially since every time they've met, it has not gone GG's way they've in, a, in the best of series. <laughs> they've been, I forget what it was. I'm going to actually have to ask. It's like, what, seven or eight games it, in a month and a half up there. against well, each other? What's no, interesting it's, it's to like me 10. is the top three is the same for everyone. The bottom three is the same from everyone. Yes. Which means the middle four are the same for everyone. That's how math yeah. works. I mean, <laughs> that's like a pretty no. big consensus. I, I feel like those are kind of the clusters we have, though. Yeah. Like, I had such an issue with the bottom and the middle. Yeah, I think you can debate the order within each of those, but there seems to be three very clear tiers where you have... The top three favorites, mm -hmm. the ones most likely to miss playoffs because it's an eight-team playoffs, and then you have the middle teams where you're debating the ranking. Um, there's a couple. Of oh, interesting okay, ones sorry, so Flowers. I, I'm wrong. Yes, Flowers put Hundred Thieves third. I was about to make that oh. point because it seems like the one that has the largest variance is Hundred Thieves. Third yeah. for Flowers. Some had seventh. Me and Rafa, baby. It was almost perfect. Because, you know, you're a documented hater of 100 Thieves, Mark. Oh, not like I predicted them third last split. <laughs> Apparently, everyone <laughs> oh, just no. forgets that, that I had them highest last split. It's, no, an over, it's an overcorrection for Mark. It's, <laughs> wait, that, that was my right last split, but it wasn't. No, I, so uh, this is, I know this is the most contentious one. We got a lot of hate for it, and people think, you know, I'm, I'm smoking something. But it's just the idea that I... These are the same as the ones that you released in your YouTube video? There's no flip-flopping going no, on? No, there's no okay. flip-flopping. And the same as the dive? Yeah, I didn't change okay. anything. Oh, wow. You should cover You should cover your I was tempted to. I think, one, there's like the, the ramp up here, given that Quid's not going to be here. And we'll mm -hmm. go over some roster news for each of these. But, you know, that, that's part of it. Uh, as well as... I think that they overperformed towards the end of the regular season where both Golden Guardians and DG had zero three weeks out of nowhere. You know, they yeah. shot up the standings with, you know, Tadnasty playing just Gragas or Scion. Like, I thought there were some things that led to them overperforming. And so, uh, yeah, I think I think 100 Thieves are, are really realistically more in that, like, seventh through fifth category. And I, I just am a, a little pessimistic, I guess. One thing I'm actually interested in is the fact that we all put C9 across the board uh, outside of Rafa, who yeah. put GG, because I thought it might be a little bit more contentious with Vulcan coming on to FlyQuest, everyone right. looking at that as, like, a big upgrade for the team. Um, I guess the fact that they lost to Golden Guardians unexpectedly is maybe factoring into that a little bit, but yeah. I was expecting it to be a little bit more contentious with FlyQuest and C9 jockeying for that first place spot. I, I want to, so what I'm thinking when I look at these power rankings now yeah. is there's a lot of groupthink going on. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, a lot of groupthink. Flowers think. is not subscribing to the groupthink because I'm not. looking like, he never I, does. I struggled with last split's results and how I feel like it almost needs to translate into summer. Oh, yeah. And that's why we all have Golden Guardians top three, aside from Flowers, and Rafa has them top one. They were second, so we're all saying, like, we don't think they're second, generally. But, like, they would be the most likely for me to fall out of top three. Uh, yes. And I'm sorry, like, I'm sorry, but, like, they were such a surprise. Because they were a surprise doesn't mean that it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, they're now going to be this good forever. 
I think what made me still believe that there would be a top three team um, was because they actually got better from the playoffs. In those playoffs, they looked they're, pretty good at MSI. Yeah, they looked better in MSI. They looked better in the finals. They looked better when they had that rematch, rematch versus Cloud9. So they were a team that was actively improving, so it didn't feel like a one-off, even though they had extremely close games versus 100 Thieves and FlyQuest during playoffs. So I, I'm led to believe, based off the fact that they're improving and keeping the same roster, that they're going to continue to improve. But I do agree with the idea, and the team that I look at to hold that sentiment is actually Team Liquid, which is... Based off of what it was a poor performance in Spring Split, you, and no, like no changes for the roster going into the summer except for the coaching changes, I was like, should I still believe they're going to be a poor team, or do I think the extra time and the new direction from the coaching side will make them better? So I actually had them higher in fifth. Uh, so I do think that, that the, the continuity will be pretty important for them. And also they had a clear strength in how they, they played early games. And also specifically, Summit was the player that I struggled with the, the most. And like, he's a really talented player and he has a hole in, a, in his game that like is extremely important to, to address, which is his team fighting. And I think he's going to deal with that. Uh, so Team Liquid is one. I, I gave the negative side 100 Thieves and we kind of glossed over the positive side because everyone else has them four or five, it feels like, basically. Aside yeah. for a couple of the haters, Flowers even has them third. So, like, I, I gave them negative interpretation. Give me the positive one, someone that, that is a believer. I can do that. Um, the biggest one being, for me, is Someday. Someday has always, for the past few years now, has been a top three top laner that has been extremely uh, uh, sturdy there. Hard to really move him. Now is playing uh, carries again, and also is playing alongside Closer, we had such a good duo with the last time they played together and it was a championship duo. So that's a big win. Um, introducing Quid, who I've been watching his streams, he's a really strong uh, mechanical player and he has a large champion pool. I think it's going to translate. You bring in a, a Korean coaching staff with Kane. Um, you bring in uh, someday who can work alongside with him. So I think the structure makes a lot of sense. And another thing that people are glossing over because they're focusing on the new stuff is their balling. They had a rusty legend in double lift, and they had a rookie. A rusty in legend. Wow. Whoa! He, he got was, better. He was, he was excavated from the ruins. <laughs> of there it is. The Hall of Fame. He's a rusty. Yeah. He was a rusty legend at the beginning, and then by the end, he at the end of the split, he was agreed by the players and overall in the All Pro vote a, a top 380 carry and a support that actually got really good by the playoffs. Right. So I think overall, great team. Really quick, as we continue this discussion, we're talking about all 10 teams. Uh, we want Twitch chat to spam the chat with the team you are most excited for, and we're going to be checking back on that in a few minutes. So you can just, whatever their code, code is. Yeah. So yeah. the tri code for C9 would just be C9. Whatever the three letters or two letters when they're in game is going to be. So C9, Fly, GG, 100, Energy, you can see it on the board. Anyway, which team are you most excited for? But Emily, you Oh, oh, I, yeah. I wanted to say regarding 100 Thieves, I think Someday is actually a big part of it. Also because of... Um, Someday coming back onto the team with that team, the way the team did like to play around bot lane dives, like previously, <laughs> like way back, suits Double Lift and Busio, I think, really well. And additionally, with the TP changes and Someday coming back onto the team, him being able to TP bot a little earlier, I'm wondering if we will see a, like, not different style necessarily from 100 Thieves, but see them go back to what we saw previously during like their championship run where the way they play around bot lane, they're still playing around bot lane, but it's slightly different. And mm. especially since Someday seems really cognizant of what's going on in the rest of the map. I think adding him back on, him and Closer seem to work really well together as well. So that's a very positive piece. The only thing I'm su like shaky on why I didn't put them higher is Quid, how well he can come into the team. That's no aspersions on him as a player. It's literally just, how is he going to fit? How is he going to communicate with this brand new team? Yeah, I also realize we haven't talked that much about Cloud9. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to say they are the most exciting team for me going into summer split. The roster's the same. Look at all those New roster jerseys. changes. New jerseys. Flapper's got a hat on again. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting serious. Uh, yeah. so a lot of times, just saying, there is MSI hangover because of the quick turnaround between MSI and the start of split. Not a problem. Not Two a problem. weeks off. Yeah, there's been extra time. <laughs> so C9 is back here. But but literally, I want to see if they can win back-to-back -back within the same year. Blabber is making his bid. He's trying to become the greatest LCS player of all time. He's got two MVPs. He's got titles across a long career. He's continuing to add to that resume. They have a chance to be really, really good.
right? They, they have the inbuilt synergy together. They have amazing mechanics in the 80 carry and mid positions, and they have really, really smart players and a good view on the game. So they have a chance, if they're motivated to do well in the regular season, really put up some amazing numbers, in my opinion. Yeah, also it's important to, like, Remark that this is MS's first like full split yeah. with the team, which is going to be awesome to see because I think already in the short time that he was with the team, he made such a difference and also improved in his communication and coordination, and that can still improve further. So to me, they're looking like the most formidable team, which is also why I put them first in power rankings. Mark, who is your most excited? You, oh, you want me to go? Yeah, I, I haven't so, heard much from you, so oh, well, I'll say there, you need in the to corner. speak up, Mark. <laughs> yeah. I'll say uh, EG actually is a team I'm really excited about, which might be a shock given that they, they, they blew been discussed up. discussed a lot. So exciting yeah. doesn't mean I think best or anything like that, and I am not making that case. But look at that turnover. You showed me basically no roster changes. This is the team with the most. Four players gone. Only JoJo Pyun remains. The rest of the team, I guess management was not happy with their performance last split. They said, well, you guys aren't worth it, and they blew, they blew it up. That's not exactly what they said. That, they, they did blow it up, though. They, what they said on Twitter was the most <laughs> BS reasoning. They're like, we're committed to this, and they're like, all right. But I actually do like a lot of the guys they brought in. As like this team, every single member has something to prove. Revenge is out of IMT jail, I think, from a lot of people's perspective, where this okay. is an org that was always struggling. He now has a teammate around him. Armeo is finally getting a shot in the LCS. It feels like a player that has been in Tier 2 doing incredible for a long time, but just yeah. hasn't gotten a full-time starter role. JoJo had a terrible last split. He clearly grind-lorded a lot in Korea. Obviously, you have uh, Unforgiven, who was in Academy as well, when everyone's like, wait, he was the all-pro first team LEC bot laner. Yes, like, sir. he mm -hmm. wants to prove he's still up there. And then Ayla had a terrible last split as well, subbing in in the middle of it. There's visa issues. There's a bunch of things he wants to prove that, like, that FlyQuest version of him is not indicative. So all five members have a ton to prove. It's basically the first time they're staying together. And in a world, if things work out, JoJo can be top three mid laner. Unforgiven be a top mid laner. He's yeah. been top one before. He can, yeah. and then you also have a potential top three bot laner in Unforgiven if he's playing well. Right. And you have Armeo who loves playing around strong lanes, and he's like a supportive style jungler. Like I think this team can actually work. The the story about Ayla for me is the most interesting one because like in when he was in TLA alongside uh, Armeo, uh, he was a shot caller and a lot of the times like a great team fighter. There's a lot that he had that he had like a great amount of control in the circumstances that he was in. FlyQuest, a lot of people were excited. I was excited. Obviously, the visa was an issue. Um, and he was going to be playing a different role, more of a follower, like following the calls that they were making with experienced members. There was a lot of that that was happening, right? So I was really interested with Ayla because now he's A, working alongside Armeo again. So that, that synergy is something that's going to still stay there. Um, and I think he's going to be in a situation where he can go back to that old form in uh, shot calling. So I want to see how that works on a team. But we are looking at FlyQuest right now. I was going to say, speaking of the team that he left, the team I'm most excited about, and I can't believe we haven't mentioned yet, is FlyQuest, right? So I said I was kind of surprised at how FlyQuest didn't creep up into that top one position in any of our power rankings. I think having Vulcan in the bot lane with Prince is such a hype lane. We are still in a very bot focused meta if they synergize really quickly this is going to be such a dangerous team and just a very fun team to watch and i'll be pretty quick on this one because i already made the case for 100 thieves i'm excited for 100 thieves yeah uh because last split there were a team that was kind of conflicting in goals development versus team a, a team that wants to win right now with bjergsen and double lift so there was a lot that i was concerned about back then uh, but now, A, you're bringing back... There's the Nuke Duck picture. Yeah. There's the Nuke Duck picture. That's, so that's another one. That's, that's another thing. That's only thing. Supposed, we get confused. So, <laughs> Quinn is supposed to be the youngest player on the team, younger than Busio. Yes. Yep. Korean mid lane prospect, but he's not here. He's not here. Now so he's, he's on, he's the, on the, the Actually, I think he's landed already. Okay. But okay. He, he was, like, on the plane this morning. Yeah, yeah, but speaking about visas, they couldn't get Quid up until this point. They had boot camped in Korea, so they had worked with Quid when he was in Korea at the yeah. time, so that's a positive. But they got to work with their coach in Nuke Duck right now, so that's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, He's, he was playing in Champs Q last split, so I'm sure he's not as rusty as people would expect. But kind of talking about the overall wins of the team is someday coming back to this team, I think, is a big win. Yep. Great comfort point for Closer as well, since he's worked really well with him in the past, and that's now good experience across the board. Busio has the time, so he's going to, I think, start mm. strong while last split started weak. Um, so there's a lot to be excited for, especially the Nuke Duck week one start. Yeah, uh, there's also a couple more teams. So keep spamming chat. We'll have those results soon. But Energy mm -hmm. is CLG, but now Energy. It's a new org. It's a new org. It's another G. But also not exactly the same roster. Yeah. So it's still the same Dokla, 
the same contracts, the same Palafox, but they have completely switched out their bot lane. Yeah, I'm super curious about this because when I think of FBI and Ignar as players, I'm not really sure how the leaning from this bot lane is going to go. It's a weird duo. Because FBI, like, I, I know uh, previously when he was on 100 Thieves, or like, he's unequivocally the best bot laner this past spring. He was definitely eclipsed by uh, Prince, by Berserker, um, even at times by Doublelift. Uh, and he kind of fell by the wayside in terms of people's estimation. But then Ignar is someone who just always wants to go in, yeah. right? And so I'm really curious to see with a really strong laning AD carry, like FBI wants to be, with this support that constantly wants to go in, how that's gonna work out with this uh, C former CLG top side. That was the challenge that I had too. I, I was like thinking back in the last time he had such a strong laner that he was working with, and I, I felt like it was Hansama, right? Uh, back on Misfit. So I was like, that is a good challenge for him. Yeah, uh, I think we've got to talk about the top side of the map for them. The same three returning guys are all really aggressive. They all want to go in all the time. They have interesting drafts. That's why I think Ignar is a good pairing potentially with them if they actually are playing well. Uh, I think they're really exciting. Yep. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think about TSM? Mm. Hauntzer's back. Hauntzer's back. There it is. Fun little experiment. What, 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 does chat, what does chat think about TSM? I hear we have the results. Yeah, they let's get to the TSM chance during MSI. Yeah. They've changed a lot, but we're, we're going to look up the results right now. Is it? Yeah. It's CSM. Oh, oh, the most exciting team yeah. to watch. Yeah. You got Hansa back on the team. You got <laughs> Turtle back they on the team. They didn't tell me, but I was like, I have a feeling people are still going to say TSM. Let's let's pull up TSM. Hansa's back. He's been working out ever since he hasn't been in the LCS. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even when he was in the LCS. We're, we're going to see probably Insanity Week 1 yep. yes. in the mid yes. lane. Chime is there. I'm actually, and I know he's not there starting mid, but I actually really like Insanity, um, and I have for a while. He's been performing super, super well in NACL uh, previously. And then also this Chime Wild Turtle lane is something yeah. I would like to see like a, a, a good solid full split of. Um, so I'm really curious. And also Hauntzer, before he was called up in the last week, was also doing incredibly well. Like he was one of the, the top top laners in the NACL during his time. Yeah, I think uh, the turtle lane on the Caitlyn game, things like that last yep. split, he was able to carry them to a couple more wins. So I'm excited to see what they can pull out here. Uh, especially Boogie was was a pretty good last split. So very interested to see. Yeah, he was a explosive jungle for me. If he got Elise, a lot of the times he was extremely active bots out of the map. And they were, in my opinion, a one dimensional team towards mid end bot lane. Yeah. Uh, whereas now bringing in Hunter, while he has the same kind of strength that Solo had as a sturdy, weak side top laner. He can play carries as a big one. And I remember the last time we saw him on stage uh, on Golden Guardian side, like he was somebody that was, in my mind, top five in the league as a top laner. He was doing well in lane. He actually had good laning stats and team fights was another thing that he was well known for. And just like behind the scenes was always kind of seen as someone who was like professional, yeah. was able to give concise and sturdy feedback. Like there's something that I think that he provides for TSM that a lot of people are crossing out. I, I'm, I'm actually fascinated by this TSM. Like, just I, before the split started, they announced their intention for to this leave. to be their last split. Yeah. yeah. And what position does that put those five players in? It doesn't necessarily change that much, but like all of them are really, it's like this long extended audition to stay in the LCS, right? Like Turtle and Hauntzer have stuck around. They want to be professional players. Boogie mm -hmm. made it to the LCS. Like they actually have a lot to play for. There's still going to be large interest in the games because whether you love them or hate them, TSM is always the team that's talked about. The fact that whether it's a meme or not, they were like double the defending champions True. in Twitch chat for the team they most wanted to talk about. Maybe it's because they just wanted to talk about the fact that they said they were leaving, but it's there. Like they are going to be so interesting to me, this whole split. I think it's weird to have a bunch of players who are like, like you said, kind of in this like audition phase, but also with no downward pressure from the org. Because a lot of the yeah. times you have this concern maybe, of like- Maybe they still want to do really well. I, I guess that's true. Like, I don't know what like the internal messaging is with yeah. them, but I also think like for someone like Revan, who's the coach who came from C9 actually, yeah. as the head coach now for them, he's someone who has a lot to prove himself. It's like you obviously stepped into this role because you want to be able to show that like with this group of guys who honestly a lot of people as you look at the rankings we're not expecting much out of but if you can get more than people are expecting heading into 2024 potentially you're like hey look i yeah. did a lot with a little something that they echoed last split that i think is going to be the same this split is just kind of like shutting out the noise and being confident about what they see in scrims or what mm -hmm. they see from their own team we saw that from solo of course solo now going to imt we saw that from like chime so like no matter how many times you said we didn't ex expect you to be as good as you guys were. Like, we thought you guys were bottom of the table teams, right? 
And they're like, yeah, we don't care. <laughs> like, yeah. We, yeah. Uh, flatly, we don't care. And I think, yes, now there's more noise because of the news about TSM. Yeah. And I think they're just going to have to. And I sh I'm prepared for them to be like, yeah, let's just continue to shut out the noise and just focus on like what we are working on as a team. I think that makes sense. There's more noise, but I actually kind of agree with Jeff that there's, or, or Mark, there's probably like less pressure mm. overall, like top down, Than right? A like TSM there's year. there's internal pressure on the individuals, like you yeah. said, but from TSM themselves, like this is kind of a, a last hurrah for them, especially with like classics like Hanser and Wild Turtle back on the yeah. team. But also they can essentially play with house money for the entirety of the split, in my opinion. So that's kind of a cool place to be because like you said, Raz, they can just focus internally on development and showing the best performances they can individually. Yeah, I want to talk about Dignitas next. Okay. So as a hardcore LCS fan, I am weirdly interested in like the bottom three teams. Mm -hmm. And we had Dignitas, TSM, and Immortals almost unanimously in the bottom three. But I think back to the spring power rankings where most of us were like, how could Santorin Jensen not finish top five? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they did. And then they changed out everyone except for Santorin Jensen. Yeah. And we're all putting them bottom three. So kind of, we can, you guys can talk about Dignitas or you can talk about the bottom three in general. Do you think, like, how do they get out of this hole? I like that, because that was a challenge for me when I was making my tier list, too. Yeah. That's like, they're a team similar in the idea of Team Liquid, where you're bringing back a core idea of your team, or you're like, no, we thought this was a win condition last split. We still think that should be the win condition yeah. this split, obviously. Diamond is back. He's mm -hmm. dominated Academy Challengers for however many years. Yes. Back in the LCS. And people have sung his praises as, like, an engaged support, someone who is very firm in what, like, how they should take fights. So at least this team seems like they will have direction. Of course, Rich coming in in the top lane. So yeah. those changes are there. I, I'm the person that's like, why... We saw the problems with their core win condition last split. It wasn't just the pieces around them. It was like Santorin had a bad split. That was the reality too. Like he was incredible for the last years that we've seen him, and, but he had a bad split. And I want to see them prove me wrong if that win condition they had in the mid jungle is now something that they can like rely comfortably on. Uh, so that's what I'm looking out for, but I still placed them bottom three. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing I'm really curious about is whether they stick to that or whether they go for a more bot focused with... Uh, Diamond and, and Tomo starting mm. uh, because Rich, I feel like, can play weak side and doesn't necessarily need a lot of attention like yeah. you might have given Armut. So I am very curious to see where Santorin is going to be pathing and giving his attention from the jungle to the team. Well, uh, one I'm more excited about actually is Immortals. But okay. we're talking about the bottom three yeah. teams. I think for Immortals, I really liked some of the stuff I was seeing from them at the end of the split. I loved when Balulu came in, the unique picks he was able to bring. Obviously, he's starting now. You have Solo joining as well. His mullet is looking better than ever. Got it cleaned <laughs> up a lot, but I appreciate what he can do on the you know kind of weak side of the map. And hopefully, that means that like Kenby gets more resources because there's always this weird tension. I felt like not like personal tension, but like gameplay, how you play the game tension mm -hmm. between Revenge and Kenby, where both want to be carry resources. But if you want to invest in Kindred, Graves, and these kinds of champions every game, you kind of need some tanking going on, probably from your top lane. And that's not what Revenge wanted to be doing. So I do think like Solo might help solve some of the team identity issues that I felt like they were having last split. I'm also super curious because I had forgotten until he mentioned it himself, Treats coming over and reuniting yes. with Tactical. He's back. They used to be the TSM Academy bot lane together, like all the way back, what, yeah. in 2020, I think? That would have been a 2019. 2019, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That far. It's wild. So, like, those, that can make them as a bot lane better. That can make, because uh, he's a more confident, engaged support as well, yeah. make can be a lot stronger as well. There's a lot can, that can change there. I'm going to give you all, like, 10 seconds to answer this question. Uh-oh. Oh, the bottom no. Three. Okay. Which of the bottom three is least likely to finish bottom three? Of Ooh. Immortals, Dig, TSM. Who's most likely to overperform? I'm going to say Dig. Immortals. I'll go TSM. I'm well, saying, I'll, I'll split it. Yeah, I'm really? saying Immortals as well. Yeah. Let's go. I'm, huh? I'm on team Hell yeah, okay. brother. First game of the day. Cloud9 versus Golden Guardians. Both teams made it to MSI. They've played a lot of games against each other, but what we wanted to do is a heat check. Okay. For how do we think they are going to be performing this summer? Raz, you're going first. Oh! oh. Yeah. Oh. So it, it's summer, for those of you who hadn't known. That's the kind of the theme of things. If the sun would eventually come out, the thermometer would be a little bit better here in Los Angeles. But... Okay. Summer champs contender. I, I don't think it's completely Change, choose accurate. Choose the right color. There you go. Yeah. Good call. Almost yeah. made a mistake. This one for me, all the way to the top. 
all the way to the top. Summer champions. We had the conversation earlier today. I was like, That's they made a no perfect color match. They made no yeah, changes. Wow. And I think they're just the best players across the board in each position. So that uh, uh, you can make the, cha the conversation about support, but I don't think anything changes there. Wait, this wait, one... let, me, let me chime in there. Okay. I think this is this is underrating them. Why are we stopping at summer champs? You know, there's a world championship, right? Are they breaking? This? Yeah, they're going oh, through wow. the roof. Okay. Oh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. And then yeah. this is a the most world... honest broadcaster, Mark Zimmerman. World... Wow. Champs. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. I think they win the world championship this year, actually. <laughs> yeah, here we and go it goes, again. It breaks through. Right. Yep, right. it's the Celsius, it's a thousand degrees, is, it's the is surface this, of the sun. Is this the opposite thing of having to wear a clown uh, hat while watching Fudge do, do a thing? So Mark is just getting ahead of things. He didn't give Cloud9 enough credit last split, so now yeah. he's like, more champs! That's what I was I don't think that's what true. What liquid is in a thermometer again? What liquid is in a thermometer again? Mercury. Mercury. It's Mercury poisonous. poisoning. It should, it's impacting your brain. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit. <laughs> For Golden Guardians, uh, I'll... I'll Keep it pretty high. I don't know. Oh, contenders. Oh, yeah, contenders. We'll take contenders. We'll take contenders. Who's going to say no to contenders? Covered up after. I, maybe me? You don't think that they're contenders for the title? Wow. I'll, do, I'll do like, since no one wanted to be honest. Oh! Wait, I, I will honest say, rankings. I honestly agree with Raz. Yeah, okay. So, Cloud9, I think, I, like, I agree with this, but I'm not going to cover over their logo. So, that's good enough. Um, Respectful. Golden honest. Guardians. Like, uh oh, you're about to be a hater. Speak that hater age. I think everyone is just a prisoner of the moment with Golden Guard. Oh, God. We spent like two months saying they were like, hey, maybe they're actually top four guys. Yeah. And now they're just like supposed to unanimously be contenders to win the split. You're going to say differently? I mean, so listen, eight teams make the playoffs. Oh, so it's God. pretty hard to say they're not at least here. But like, I think that's pretty realistic. Uh-oh. Like, I want to set them up for success. You're not doing that. No, I am. <laughs> <laughs> because I have oh a lesson for the youngins out there. <laughs> Life is so much about expectation setting. If we set their expectations here, they're only going to be disappointed. But set your expectations down here, and you're going to have a lot better time. So they're between Let's MSI see. Hangover and Playoffs Maybe. Bath? Well, listen, <laughs> I what? don't agree with the scale that much. <laughs> it's kind of like they're here and Cloud9 is up here. I think that's, I think that's fair. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's so you think they make playoffs? Yeah. Set your expectations appropriately. Drink cold yeah. chocolate milk, uh, you know, I, not hot chocolate. I had one thing really quick on Golden Guardians, though. Okay. Um, they, they did have a big moment at MSI. Yes. Yeah. Licorice solo killed 369. And we've made a tier list of NA top laners who have solo killed 369. And I want to I want to show where Licorice fits on that tier list. If we can pull it up. Wow. He is right at the top. This, this is, is zoomed out, by the way. This is as big oh, okay. as the, tier list. <laughs> the entire tier list. Yeah. This, this reminds me of the uh, MSI appearances between Ruler and Stixie. <laughs> <It was like laughs> yeah. So congratulations. Congratulations, yeah. Licorice. What a, what a stud. Top, what a top stud. Top stud. Also, oh, we got the replay. We of have it. footage of him also solo killing Bin. I so thought that didn't a happen. A lot of people said this wasn't real, but this is the clip. There's a lot of assists I see. Zoom yeah. in. Do oh, it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. killed Bar. Yeah, I can't see the Gragas. He may not have been on yeah, but that's like that's like a shield on top of him that like gives yeah. an assist to the Rakan. You know, technically, did we'll the Rakan do anything? I don't think so. All right, predictions coming in the day. We're almost done. We're gonna send it to the caches very soon. Who has the differences? Middle of the oh. day. So Mark and I are at least yeah. consistent. I'm surprised TL team. is so strongly by fans. 86% TL. I thought people would be a little scarred. TL was eighth last split. They finished under TSM last split. You know, TSM was seventh. Team Liquid was eighth. I'm surprised to see it so heavily TS, uh, TL favored. I Ooh. really love the percentage yeah. in the fan votes. I actually yeah. like that too. Can I start submitting percentages too? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have further, multiple people voting in your head? Like, they're like different ideas. versions of Jack giving different ideas. It's like the little, the one Jad on one side, on one shoulder, and the, the I can't angel wait. devil Jats. I can't wait for the 50-50 vote one day. Well, I mean, NRG, the, the, EG NRG is close. That, yeah. close. that one's close. Yeah. That one was difficult. I'm looking forward to that one now. I mean, that one to me was also the closest. Yeah. But one day the fan vote will aim for a 50. We'll get it right, and we're forcing the production team. What to do you do with the graphics in there? Yeah, yeah what are we doing, yeah. huh? Either way, happy to be back. LCS Summer. Let's get game one underway.
And now we get to see Cloud9 and Golden Guardians at MSI. Yeah, I feel it coming. Woke up looking like everything is new. Opening day presented by MasterCard. First up, please join me in welcoming your spring 2023 LCS champs, Cloud9. One of the greatest players North America has ever produced right next to him with Blabber in the jungle. In mid lane, he may have showed up a little late in spring, but showed up he did. It's him and S. In bottom lane, the reigning MVP, Berserker. And on support, the roll swap king. Give it up for Sven. On the other side of the rift, everybody counted them out at the start of the year, but they said F you to the doubters at every turn and made it to MSI. It's the Golden Guardians. They beat FlyQuest. All that glitters is gold. for the man solo killing his opponents in international competition. It's Licorice. Next to him, making the moves early on, getting the rest of the team rolling. Please give it up for River. In mid lane, an all pro mid laner who can always play to impress, it's Gory. Bot lane, a long time great, looking to keep that greatness going. It's Stixay. And in support, another roll swap monster. Give it up for who he. The 
the LCS 2023 Summer Split starts right now. Summer Split is kind of like when you get to figure out what you're made of. It's like the ultimate test. Last play, we were on a really good trajectory and then we kind of fell short. So I hope this split we can, you know, start off good and end good as well. Still looking for a little bit more damage and he finds it. Fly West, crush him. I'm most excited in the Summer Split to play with my new team and to see how well we do. I'm excited to show what Timu can, can actually do. Core JJ grabs the kill on Ayla. Yon's gonna be focused, but it won't matter. Everybody else on Fly Quest is going nowhere. Team Liquid with a triple kill. The summer split, I'm just excited to play. I'm glad to be back. I think I'm most excited just for a chance to win. Go to finals, play in big stadium again, and hopefully win this time. I guess I'm just excited to get started because I think when the pressure's on, some people will rise up to the challenge, some people will fade away a little bit. It's been a while since I've competed in like high stakes environments. I want to like feel the rush. I want to feel it again. Welcome to the LCS opening day presented by MasterCard. We are here at the Riot Games Arena. And gentlemen, it is finally time to kick off some summer split action. I'm Captain Flowers, joined by Azale and Jat from the Analyst Lounge here for a TriCast for this game number one rematch of the spring split final. I mean, it just feels good to be back, man. You know, it's yeah. been, been a bit of a weird year. We're a couple weeks into where we would normally be in the split, but we are starting off and we're starting off with a bang. Cloud nine golden guardians should be a lot of fun and it's going to be a little bit of a sprint of a split right we have six weeks of regular season to get 18 games in there's going to be wednesday thursday friday lcs and from a team perspective that means you really don't have that long to make adjustments right yeah. you get to play like a third of your season is on one patch across the two weeks yeah. so right now we're on 13 11 it will actually be the only week that lcs plays on this patch so these teams need to have a really good meta read because they're not going to have long to adjust from this game to the third game they play this week yeah, absolutely i mean if, if you're trying to finish up at the top of the table if you're looking for those top couple spots uh, you need to be pretty much hot out of the gate well, let's see how the picks and bans are going to go. Blitzcrank banned first by C9, wanting to keep that one away from who he. Nico banned out by the Golden Guardians. For those of y'all that may not have been keeping up with changes, Nico is very popular, very powerful right now. It's going to be a pretty reliable staple on the ban list. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, across all leagues in 13-11, it's 98% presence for Nico. 23 picks, 130 bans. So it is pretty much getting permabanned at this point alongside Melio, who so far is absent from the ban list. It'll be interesting yeah. to see if that actually does make it through. Uh, those are the top two presence champions right now and things that are mostly just getting straight banned every game. Yeah, it's likely we're going to see a Felios picked this game. He is the most picked champion across regions, not actually drawing that many bans, but still getting picked 110 times in what looks to be about 140 games. And yeah, that's a lot of stuff available. Well, we've got junglers banned out by C9 with Vi and Kha'Zix being the focus. Annie banned out by Golden Guardians. But as you were saying, yeah, Melio right up there at the top of the table yeah. in terms of presence. If that's left open, C9 can lock it in. Oh. But it's an immediate response from the Golden Guardians picking up the Lucian and the Ari. And I really want to see how Zven does on Melio. So one thing that I think he has as an advantage over most players for most of his career is he is just a grind lord. So he'll look at what the most played champions are in pro for that role, and then he will play 100 games on it. So just because it's a new champion doesn't mean that Sven won't have really good familiarity with it. Well, it's also going to be really interesting to see, are we going to get, you know, Lucian Nami on the other side? Uh, Lucian is a really good pairing with Melio, but it had been taken away. Kindred really strong on this patch, something that Blabber has been known for in the past. With the Triforce changes, Triforce Kindred is fully in effect. This yeah. is one of the strongest champions on the patch. I saw Blabber behind the scenes in makeup earlier today, and I told him, hey man, I'm casting your games. Give me some spice. Give me something exciting. How about that Trinity Force Kindred? And he just kind of laughed and said, all right, well, convince my coach. And yeah. apparently the coach has also been convinced because we've got the Kindred. I'm so happy to see Blabber on this pick specifically. The Zeri locked in for Berserker next to the Melio. And yes, as expected, Lucian does not lane with his wife. He lanes with a fish. It's <laughs> Nami locked in for Golden oh, Guardians. No. Oh, one of the really nice things with Melio, you know, is with that W, it's essentially giving you that extra auto attack range. So when you play double marksman comps with it, you can sometimes really get a lot of extra value out of that. Have multiple yeah. people in the W, multiple people getting that extra attack range. So if Kindred you know, gets those four marks and then also has that stack and you have a lethal tempo Zeri stack, like the auto attack range becomes really, really crazy, especially with Zeri Q. I also do wonder if Cloud9 
depending on how fun they want to get, if they can continue to pick champions that like Trinity Force. Because I think current, like you, Zeri Trinity Force Triforce, is pretty good. Zeri, Triforce, right? Triforce Kindred. Kindred. Just a couple more and they can do four, <laughs> three, and we'll see. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of the meta unironically now. Yeah. Everyone feels Triforce is so good. It's just <laughs> shove as many Triforce champions into your draft as possible. See how it goes. Well, let's see what the bands will look like after this. Obviously, two mid laners here banned out by Golden Guardians in the second phase. The LeBlanc, the Syndra, two of those options that Gori does not want to be facing with the Ari in mid. Wukong and the Poppy banned away by the side of Cloud9. They don't want to allow Poppy to have that steadfast oh. presence. Can be very effective against these champions with a lot of dashes. But the Golden Guardians, they are going to lock in their jungler last because it's Jax picked up for the top lane matchup. Uh, the bin effect, <laughs> they just played in against enough jacks from bin they decide to wield it for <laughs> themselves slam it. well and it feels like gragas is just such an easy answer it's a strong matchup yes. into jacks it is very frustrating you know good four front jacks line actually too. play into that it works well with front line you know you can go multiple different styles with the build also has great synergy with kindred because you drop the kindred ulti you can ult gragas alt people out of it uh so that can also yeah. be pretty nice to have the displacement what's the last one going to be here for the side of cloud nine they know most of what their opponents are going to be playing. Only that jungle pick remains. C9 has targeted uh, the jungle pool perfect. very heavily as well. No, Cassante is perfect, I think, because they already have a huge amount of damage with double A to carry if they can get strong front line with yeah. Gragas and Cassante. Yes, they could technically flex Cassante around, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to put him mid because that's what MS was very effective with before. The Cloud9 composition just makes too much sense. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's really, really solid. And you're looking over at the, the other team, Golden Guardians are looking to play more through side with a Jax potentially. Yeah. So we'll have to see if they can create any sort of side lane advantages. And can they grab a jungler to help them do that? You know, are they going to commit heavily to side lanes? Oh, or is it going to be Jungle Jax? Oh, that okay. might be the recipe uh, after all. Oh, so I, I wasn't necessarily expecting that, but uh, Jungle Jax definitely something that you can play. It's a lot slower of an early game champion. You know, I used to play a lot of this champion in the jungle. The early game is really, really weak, and it hasn't been played in pro that I've seen so far. You know, yeah. Dad is actually just looking at the stats, doesn't look like it's been picked at all. Um, or is it or jungle? jungle? Oh, oh right, I'm interesting. This okay. What is happening here? <laughs> They're doing some flex. Don't tricks. get bamboozled, Definitely. boys. Don't get bamboozled just yet. We know players like to do this a lot. You sit on something wacky, then switch it at the end of the timer. Yeah. They got three seconds left. I mean, these, these are things that people That's play. All they a need. Little, a That's all they need. That's all they need. That would have been so much cooler. Yeah, I but told so much you. Worse. I warned you. I put out a big sign that said no bamboozling, and you got bamboozled. I mean, neither of them have been picked in jungle in pro in 1311 at least. Um, yeah. You know, they're, they're pretty neat niche picks even as far as solo queue goes. Jax, if you can get a lot of farm, you still turn into the Jax, but the problem is your early game ganks are really not threatening and you do need a lot of farm on this champion. You do need a lot of items to really become powerful. So I'm a little bit kind of, I don't know, questioning like what, what the thought process is here, but we'll see if they can reveal that to us in the game. If I'd have to guess, it's that he's gonna be able to win level three against Kindred because he's got his E, can he block auto attacks? He uh, dodges the majority of the Cloud9 damage because Kindred Zeri won't be able to hit him when he's in Counter-Strike, but yeah. that's the best I can do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be really interesting. And it is Gragas mid as well. So that did get flexed around. So it is going to be Cassante top. It is going to be looking like AP Gragas mid for MS. So both teams utilizing some potential flex picks here. We'll have to see what does work out. Uh, I mean, I do think if, if Kindred face checks you, you're going to be able to obviously win that. Um, but I do think it can be tough for Jax. You know, if you're actually face checking the Kindred, that's going to be difficult. And if you have to use your Leap Strike before Kindred uses Dance of Arrows, it's pretty easy to actually avoid the Counter Strike landing on you. And then from there, it can get pretty difficult for Jax because you can sometimes get kited out. The Mounting Dread can slow you down. So we'll have to see if, if River can really make this work. All right, here we go. First game of Summer Split. The first game of Melio in the LCS. Golden Guardians versus Cloud9 rematch. Very defensive setup here in bottom lane from C9. Barrier on Berserker with the heal on Zven. On the other side, it's the heal on Huhi with the Ignite for Stixay. Again, you want to see the Lucian and Nami be able to put some pressure on these guys early and avoid the very scary Zeri pain train situation once she gets to three items and takes over the game. Exactly. I mean, they, they don't need to get much done in lane. They just need to farm it out. Right? They are playing the superior scaling lane, so it's going to be a lot more on Stixay and Huhi, who I do think, you know, to their credit, uh, were one of the strongest Lucian Namis that we had in the LCS. They were one of the, the duos that was actually confident to slam this down and go aggressive. Also looks like River might be trying to go for a not gonna fairly work. early invade, but yeah, it's, this is not a bad start. He could still steal it in theory. Right. He'll deploy that okay. Counter-Strike. Nicely done. He gets the big Raptor. One small one. Gonna continue fighting Blabber for these other ones. There's another small one. Pushed him out. 
Where's the next small one? Oh, he's just gonna keep beating him over the head. All right, this is quite an intense battle here. <laughs> just, okay, just sticking around, takes the last raptor. And okay, he two. He got the big one. No, that was the third one. That was the third small raptor out of the five. He got three of the five and the big one. Not bad. Yeah, got level two. So oh, you actually, meant level two. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it did end up actually working out. It's interesting. You know, I, I thought that MS was going to be able to stay around there and potentially push River back. Uh, but at the end of the day, Gory's shoving mid, so MNS feels that he has to stay mid to actually catch the XP there. Uh, River just kind of wins out in this level one skirmish. You know, Blabber starting W, River gets the last hits, gets the nice smite secure. Uh, so it is going to be a slight advantage there for River, and it's it's a clever little level one that he's planned. Yeah, and at least early game, that explains the Jack's jungle. You haven't seen it that often, but he's like, you always have these little pocket strategies when you pull out something that other people haven't done of how are you going to pull off a surprise and it's just a late raptor invade yeah. he was very confident he was going to be able to pull that off he wins the smite 50 50 and he gets a small early advantage i mean if the the double-edged sword of playing something that is not meta the part that hurts you is pretty much always going to be objectively weaker than the meta picks. Meta. everything that <laughs> but, comes next but the thing that helps you is the fact that nobody else knows what to expect from this yeah. either they don't play against it they don't practice yeah. against it so that element of surprise is always going to afford you some bonuses if you know how to use it right. Bottom lane, the pressure is on from Stix A and Huhi, forcing Berserker and Sven underneath the turret nice and early with that lane control. Berserker, of course, going to be protected by a lot of what Sven can provide. Melia, one of those traditional enchanter types. Remember, he can get allies fired up with a bonus damage for some trades if he has to. But the healing from Cozy Campfire, the shields mm -hmm. as well, going to make sure that Berserker can stay in this lane as long as he can. Yeah, absolutely. And, and later on, this pairing just becomes so dangerous. You know, lethal tempo Zeri, the Q range is already ridiculous. Then you have that amped by the W, you have the move speed that's actually given to you by the shielding as well for Melio. Yeah. You can play more aggressive because you don't actually have to bring cleanse because Melio is your cleanse with this ulti. So you play mm -hmm. barrier, you yeah. play heal. It becomes very, very difficult. You know, when we're back in the era of Triforce Hurricane, Titanic, you know, these really kind of tanky builds where Zeri was so frustrating to deal with, uh, very similar to how she was on release. And Stick saying who he continuing, just shoving these guys back. As long as this pressure stays on, that's the goal. River also afforded the opportunity to move into the enemy jungle when his lanes have priority in the side. Blabber's gonna path down here as well. There are no camps other than the chickens to go after. Yeah, he's just trying to cycle the chickens. He stole them first. He's walking over ward. Blabber didn't want to get caught on the chickens. So now he actually has a little bit of a jump on him. With E down, he can push him off of this, but MS taking very low in mid. Yeah, Blabber's chasing River away because River deployed the Counter-Strike on the chicken camp before Blabber showed up. It means Jax's main dueling tool was not available. But the problem is, it's not like C9 could collapse for a true punish on that because MNS is currently so low, he can't enter into any PvP. But River gets pushed out towards bot side and yeah. the mark spawn top side and you have a pushing top lane. So yeah. Blabber should be able to get a free mark up on top. And I actually thought the pathing from Blabber there was really intelligent yeah. because he walked a long way around. He was expecting that River would actually be in that brush over by Raptors. He knew he was going to look to go for the reap. And if he face checks him there, he'd be in trouble. So he takes the long way around, is able to actually secure a mark off that, push River out of his bot side. And Blabber, despite the invade, he's up a camp. He's doing well. Yeah, I think he adjusted to the state of the game beautifully. That move, I think, gets him completely back in the game. More generally, I am really interested to see which one of these teams can make a statement in game one. Again, this was a rematch of the spring finals between C9 and Golden Guardians. And a lot of times there is some sort of like MSI hangover when you start summer split. But that's when MSI is like right before the start of the summer split. Weirdly enough, because the LCS was delayed two weeks, these teams did get a little more time yeah. to settle in. So yeah. I don't think Rust could be an excuse for these guys. And at least when I was looking at these two teams before the start of the season, I see massive potential for this C9 team. They won the spring split when MNS only played half of the regular season. They've had so much more time together. Their skill level in individual roles should in theory be so high. I think they have a chance to do something very special this split, but we need to see it early on in this game actually. You can see down 14 CS with inferior early game champions, but they're definitely not looking to dominate the early game like they were last split. And I think this ties in, especially considering what you said at the start of the day here during our introduction, it's gonna be a fast split. Six mm -hmm. weeks, everything back to back to back to back to back to back super week. It means that if you're not on early, that thing of, hey, they just need time to gel. Well, the clock is shorter than ever.
Yeah, absolutely. And, and expectations are going to be really high for MNS because he came in here, he won right away. It was actually the, the shortest distance or shortest number of games ever between joining a team and winning a title in L yeah. LCS. Yeah, 10 regular, ten, like 10 games. Basically. Yeah, something like that. So, you know, it was pretty incredible. You know, couldn't really be much better of a start for MNS, but expectations, because he had such a good first split with the team, are going to be that much higher. We can see Blabber, they have pushed down through bot, so they're starting this up. But River is in the area. 6A trying to catch this wave. Uh, doesn't look like there's going to be a contest because MNS has first move. MNS will, will see. Stop Gory there, but River is getting close and is literally fighting for this. River's made his way six. in. Blabber now might have a problem here, but it's secured oh. by the Cloud9 jungler, but he flashes over the wall trying to escape. River, Berserker and Zven wanted to protect that jungler as MNS needs to escape from Gory. The ultimate's expended not by anyone just yet. You can see Gory still having that spirit rush there. Finally, time's out. Man, that was a robbery. That could have gone so poorly for Cloud9. They're already down a thousand gold. They grouped early for the dragon. If they would have sacrificed the tempo, the health, and lost the dragon, I think it would have been a disaster. But they get out with no deaths, and I think they should be grateful for that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised, though, that that Zven and Berserker just kind of let River walk into the pit because 6A wasn't there yet, so they actually had a numbers advantage, and it felt like they weren't willing to actually step forward and actually challenge uh, as they walked over. So potentially not knowing how close 6A was, but it did get a little bit dicey. You know, Blabber had the Mounting Dread stack, so he's trying to actually time his smite with the third hit of the E, plus that smite, uh, which is a pretty good secure if you can actually time it properly with Kindred. And I also want to say, like, every time we pan mid, MNS has, like, three health. <laughs> Gory has been harassing him so hard. He's had prior this whole game. He's up almost well, 20 CS, and now they're looking to take advantage. Okay, River level five here on the Jacks. Grog ulti used for the disengage well very early. Nicely done from MNS. Dropping the aggro, the ulti also hits the wave, helps thin that out so they can't stick around and continue moving forward to try to continue the dive. Golden Guardian's gonna get forced back there. And because they were focused on the play mid, it opens up the opportunity for Fudge Oof. and Blabber to secure the Herald here on the top side. So the first two neutral objectives of the game do go Cloud Nine's way. Yeah, despite the fact that Gory has been having the push and has been winning it on a lot of these trades, it's been Fudge pushing top side constantly, right? And that allowed mm. Blabber to grab the first mark off the scuttle top. It allowed him to actually start up the Herald before River even went for that dive mid so back to back objectives here going the way of cloud nine and as mns gets more levels he's starting to do better and better in these trades uh, starting to have that sustain ramping up you can see a pretty significant cs lead though for 6a and huhi and they've already yeah. taken two plate spots so they're doing really well with this lucianami yeah and i think when golden guardians looks back on this game they may have some regrets oh gory's about to regret it if he does not get the hell away from mns below 100 hp here on the re has to take the recall here and I mentioned that they may have regrets because they have seemingly had pressure mid and bot the whole game, yet they didn't get Rip Carol the War Dragon, which is normally how you want to convert those advantages. Right. So Cloud9, I think, really just escaping this early game as their scaling needs to turn on, right? They want to be able to get Trinity Force coming through onto Blabber. They want to be able to get some items on Azeri. Then they'll be able to team fight. And even now, MNS, I think, has made it through the most difficult part of his laning phase. Now, the percentage of his healthy gains from his pass will make it harder and harder for Gory to harass him. So uh, I think Cloud9 escaped this first 10 minutes and Golden Guardians had advantages that they couldn't quite capitalize on. Blabber with still the one stack that he got from the Scuttlecraft that you pointed out just a moment ago. Isaac will wait and see when he acquires four since that's the big moment you really yeah. want to hit. That's the point that you need to guarantee that you're at before you start getting into the bigger fights. The extra range does a lot for enabling him. Of course, he is going to have extra auto attack range thanks to the cozy campfire from Zven. You already mentioned how with two marksmen, you're going to get even more value than normal out of that one. The Golden Guardians maintain a gold lead, but still, it's less than a thousand. The big thing I'm looking at here, the next Drake's going to spawn in about a minute and a half. And remember what the changes to Unleash Teleport, it unleashes at 10 minutes now, which means it's much mm. easier for top laners to affect a second dragon fight. Previously, top laners could only unleash TP to a second dragon if the first one was taken super late, nine mm. minutes or later. Now, practically guaranteed you're gonna be able to do it unless both teams are ignoring the Drake. Gory gets knocked oh, back wow. by Ibn S. Nicely played there. The flash ready from the Golden Guardian's mid laner means that Blabber cannot show up to secure the kill. Gory is down a summoner and his ulti now, though, with only 60 seconds until that Drake spawns. Yeah, it's a great trade. So Gory's going to be a lot weaker for this potential dragon take. You can see they're trying to look for a pick here on Blabber. We'll see if he walks a dangerous way. Not going to do it. It does have the Herald. With Gory chunked out, they're just going to drop that mid. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how effective River can be in these fights. You know, yeah. there is some AP with the Gragas, obviously, but Gragas is not really going to be focusing the Jax. And against double marksmen, Jax can be very tanky because of the Counter-Strike. 
Oh, forcing the flash out of him and S, but River flashes over the wall to keep him chased down. Licorice ready to fire the Orn Horn oh. from downtown. It's first blood to the Golden Guardian's top lane. And the bubble, though, from who he was actually huge because it prevented the Kindred all coming out from Blabber. He was CC'd up when his mid laner was going down there. Some nice little counter punch from Golden Guardians. The Herald gets dropped mid, but it's Golden Guardians that get the kill. Finally, a nice proactive play by Golden Guardians. They also have Kraken uh -oh. Slayer completed for Stixie, and they can push Blabber out of here, maybe kill him. It was a trick the whole time. Who he stuck around in the brush on a dangerous recall because they were ready when Blabber came over the wall, and they immediately just kill him. Golden Guardians was one step ahead. I don't think Blabber had his W up there, so he didn't actually have the cooldown reset on his Q. So when he uses the Q over mm. the wall, if you don't have your W down, it's actually a really long cooldown, so he couldn't go back. Uh, after he hopped over, was kind of just locked in there, and then they decide with the ultimate drop, they're going to try to TP in, they're going to try to make that fight work, um, but it does not go their way. Another kill now going the way here of Golden Guardians, who are looking really good in these early minutes. We can watch this one more time. Huhi and River wrapping around. MNS was very far forward, trying to harass Gori. Honestly, just way too far up, you know, looking for that yeah. poke. Didn't need to be there. I think it's just a good move there by Huhi to give them the numbers advantage. You can see Melio for his van just arriving in the bottom lane as this play is unfolding. The bubble does land there onto Blabber, as you can see, which may have been able to save his life. And then right yeah, here, no I w. think Blabber's just trying to do a tempo play right there, but another beautiful bubble, no W, as you pointed out, and they're able to kill him. Yep. Yeah, he just basically wanted to stop the recall, try to potentially catch Huhi. If Huhi's by himself there, he can probably get a kill. Uh, he didn't have vision on the Ari, though, and River now back to live gonna be able to secure a dragon here so taking the second dragon of the game for themselves uh this is gonna be chemtech soul but river you know farming pretty well he is down about 20 cs unfortunately though to blabber who does have the triforce already complete you can see mythic starting to come through here as fudge popping the ulti trying to get aggressive yeah fudge wants the all-out play here but licorice gets back underneath the turret in time fudge still just trying to pressure him as much as he can with the extra damage the extra vamp from that ultimate on Cassante. Blabber's also here, so yeah. if Mudge can get this shoved up in time, they Good might pressure. be able to force the dive. There it is, minions underneath the turret. Licorice knows this is trouble. Fudge gonna take the aggro. Licorice still alive for now, trying to avoid the proc on the Kindred. Oh, he rams his head in the wall, does not get what he was looking oh, for. Okay. Until the end, he does find the knock up here with the Orn ulti, but he's still dangerously low. Health and mana both. Yeah. Fudge taking a lot of damage from the turret aggro it was sloppy but cloud nine gets it done yeah the healing there for for, for licorice you know from his radiant virtue for a second made me think he was actually going to survive you know he drops the ulti and cloud nine were not juggling aggro very well they were losing a lot of damage as one would pick it up then the other would go back out um, but at the end of the day they do make it work and they are working away on that tower top you can see blabber's trying to actually finish off that tower oh golden guardians Making a move for the tier one in bottom lane, but teleport reinforcement from Fudge means the Golden Guardians will not get a trade turret here on the bottom side as Blabber finishes taking the first turret of the game in top lane, evens out the gold for Cloud9. And he's gonna be able to get another mark right now on these Raptors, so at this point, He's actually going to be leading the game in gold. And I think it's a really interesting use of resources there for Cloud9 when they get the kill and Fudge immediately recalls so Blabber can get solo turret gold. And then to make up for the lost tempo of Blabber being top, Fudge uses his teleport bottom lane. So Fudge was definitely the support to Blabber there. And then on top of that, if he's able to secure this Rift Trail, he's going to be getting extra gold from this as well. So really, he is set up to carry this game. Well, I think that's one of the beautiful things of, of playing a carry jungler in these situations. You know, Fudge doesn't have to be the guy that gets all the gold. Triforce was already done, so you can crush through that tower really quickly. You can see he's like almost 2k ahead now yeah. of the enemy jungle. He has about 2k in pocket, gets solo turret gold. The TP bought from Fudge was brilliant to cover, so they're not going to be trading towers. They're going to guarantee themselves first tower. So I want to get you guys' opinion on this because I've been seeing a lot of conversations recently. Trinity Force is very powerful right now. This item is incredibly strong. People are looking for more champions to build it on. River going with the Divine Sunderer, sort of the old school build, and I I have to say I don't see the logic in it simply because the enemy team is not super tanky barring Cassante. I feel like Trinity offers more value here, but maybe there's something I'm missing. I, I think possibly because it's a little bit lower income and it, it just depends on how you want to play fights. I was going to question like, how does Golden Guardians get onto Blabber and Berserker and how do they get backline access? In which case you'd want the Trinity Force. But if he thinks he needs to fight front to back and they have to kill Cassante first, then maybe you can think the Sunderer, but overall I think Trinity Force is a strong guard. Yeah, I I think Triforce is a lot better, personally. I mean, I know I've heard the argument that, like, if, if you don't think you can auto-attack a lot, then you're not going to get much out of the attack speed on the Triforce, and then some of the other 
stats become more valuable, but I'm not like really sold on it. Uh, and Jax is really auto attack heavy because of your passive with your ult. So uh, I do think Triforce would have been the better buy, but either way, we'll see what River can get done. Yeah. Again, I, I, I think he should probably just go like armor from here and just go for like a tanky build. And also, I mean, it says it's two kills to one, but it's also two Triforces to zero Triforces. So who's really <laughs> Ryan, mean? The true metric of measuring success in League of Legends in 2023 summer, but we do have less than a minute and a half until our third Drake of the game. It is Chemtech Soul, and both teams are currently sitting at one Drake, so I would say the pressure on the Drakes is about as low as it could be given the game state. Mm. I actually really like this. So it's an Ardent Sensor Rush uh, from Zven. I think with Double Marksman, this makes a lot of sense. You know, just foregoing a Mythic, going straight towards that Ardent Sensor, it's really, really cheap. 2100 gold for that first buy, so you can complete it really, really early, and both Berserker and Bob are going to get crazy value from this. You know, even even more so than a double, a normal double marksman game, because Blabber is so exceptionally rich at this point. So uh, you get that cozy campfire down. You're buffing up multiple members. You're giving them both art and sensor, giving them both additional range. You can give Moosey with your E. It's going to be really, really difficult, I think, to deal with these guys if they can have a solid front to back where their backline isn't just getting deleted by you know Ari and Jax. And of course, that's the job of the Cassante of the Gragas. You can even see the Everfrost build for MS. This is not the insta kill you Gragas that just wants to go strictly for burst. This is going to provide him more utility, more setup, mm. better peel for these carries that are the stars of the show as the teams battle for positioning over some of the vision here in the bot side river with that Drake about to spawn in 15 seconds and Cloud9 also having the Herald in pocket. They feel that they're in a pretty good spot to force the issue, take control. Just the Herald charge alone will be enough to guarantee death of the tier one turret here in mid c9 players jumping forward off the back of it to see if they might be able to set up something for a pick after but golden guardians respects them enough for now although they are pushing forward cloud nine may be able to make a move on him here but golden guardians just walking it all the way back towards the other side of mid lane and it looks like they're not concerned with this spawning drake yeah you could see also a total lack of vision towards the bottom side river means golden guardians is just going to forfeit this one, which I think puts them in a pretty poor position in this game overall with the Zeri scaling kicking on, with Blabber Look farming Licorice, so yeah. efficiently. And Licorice is just trying to maybe find an angle, yeah. but with no vision, how are they really going to get onto a target they care about? Yeah, I think they were hoping that Cloud9 would over push for the tier two, and they were trying to set yeah. up for, for an engage, you know, from both sides. Uh, but Cloud9, no, they don't have vision in enemy jungle. They have vision in the river, just retreat back, uh, cover that, you know, be able to send people up top actually try to cover MS is potentially in trouble here as yeah. he's trying to get back That's towards his tower. Whoa. Yeah, River forces him to flash over the wall. Now wants to set up another one. The Everfrost slow into the charm. They're going to land the counter strike and it's River taking the kill. Three kills now for the Golden Guardians. Two of those on the enemy mid. MS zero, two, and zero on the Gragas as Gory will be left up here in the top lane to take out the tier one turret. That was one of the best uses of the Super Blast Cone I think I've seen. Yeah, that <laughs> was good. To get behind MS while still having all of his chase skills down, really nice securing of the kill. They may have been able to get him without yeah. the Giga Blast Cone, but it just looked a lot nicer. And this is one of the things that I think, you know, if there was something to be critical of MS's play, is that sometimes he does get a little bit kind of risky with his pathing. You know, mm -hmm. he, he walks into dangerous spots and the games that he did have that were uh, games that were being criticized last split, it was often because he was getting picked off a lot. He was walking into careless locations. When your whole team is bot side, taking that dragon, and we see that Gory's up towards top, we don't see anyone else on the map. It's very likely they're going to be supporting. It's very likely they're going to be covering that Ari. He walks a dangerous route, does get punished for it. So they lose the tower and they do lose their mid laner. They're going to see if they can get Licorice now. Yeah, Licorice flashing on the other side of Fudge so that the all out couldn't bring him back towards Blabber. Licorice knows that even with the Sunfire, even with Radiant Virtue, both completed and upgraded, it's still difficult to survive Ooh. against a Kindred that's got that much okay. money. Sven takes a ton of damage there. Yeah, I mean, that, that is one of the downsides of going for Art and Sensor Rush is it has zero HP in it, right? You know, a lot of the Mythics have some Ruby Crystals in there, have Kindle Gem in there, whatever. Uh, but he has zero HP purchase right now between the, the Vandal Gas uh, Gem and, and the Kindle Gem. River gonna step forward using the counter strike to absorb those auto attacks from Berserker, just like we were talking about what the Jax picks does against the Marksman here. They want to turn it back against Blabber as C9 wants to chase. MS leads the way, but Blabber continuing to try to fire those arrows into River. He had another counter strike in time. River thinking about going over the wall here potentially to try to get away. They, they send out the Orn Horn and Blabber's up in the air. Now he's got to disengage from the pit. Fudge now when they're alone against three Golden Guardians. Gory goes over the wall, retreats right back to his team. They drop Lamb's Respite. It's just enough to escape. And nobody dies. Nobody dies. I not a say, single one. 21 minutes into this game, four total kills. This yeah. does not look like 
a Cloud9 versus Golden Guardians match from Spring. I think one of the things that made Spring Cloud9 so dominant was their absolute focus on the early game. They'd pick to win every single lane and they'd steamroll them. And then the games that Golden Guardians beat Cloud9, it's because they had stronger early game than Cloud9. But this is very different. There's a lot of scaling and a lot of farming going on in this game. Well, one of the big things about that fight, I think, one of the reasons why the Golden Guardians were able to fight back the way they were is when you look at the item points, the gold is very close, the game is very even, mm. but Golden Guardians had two completed items on their mid laner and on their bot laner compared to just the one and change on the other side. Berserker has now completed the Hurricane, so that's been brought closer, but with Banshee's Veil and then the Gale Force being done already for the Golden Guardians, they had a lot more firepower actually usable by their champions. Well, it's going to be a lot about, you know, playing around your points of power for Golden Golden Guardians, it is their mid lane, right? And for Cloud9, yeah. it's actually the jungle. Like basically, that they're in inverse situations. Where it's about a 2,000 gold lead for Blabber. It's about a 2,000 gold lead for Gory. So these guys really are all the power. And Gory's been spending a lot of time inside lanes. He took the top tier one. He just took the bot tier one as well. So if he's not with the team. Golden Guardians cannot fight. Blabber taking a little bit of damage there, but can still be healed up pretty effectively by Sven. Golden Guardians really trying to force down this tier one turret in mid lane. Getting rid of this is gonna open up the enemy jungle a lot more for them. There's not a lot of health remaining, so they're just trying to force in that last little bit, but Cloud9 reinforces it with enough of their guys that it just can't be done. Top lane continues to just be a bottom lane split push, mm -hmm. and that's what it's gonna look like for a while. And this is one of these nice changes actually, you know, since mid season is that you do get the double red buff later on in the game. You know, you're playing double yeah. marksman here. You know, normally it would have to be just the Zeri getting it, but Kindred actually has the red buff and Zeri has the red buff with those changes. Uh, so that is going to be feeling really nice for a composition like this in particular. Azil, who do you think has stronger front to back? Uh, I, I think it's C9. I think for sure it's C9. I e think you even can... with the counter strike from River and the fact that Licorice is. Yeah, because I just think it's, I think it's pretty difficult. Because Jax only has the, the one Q, unless you get a lot of CDR and you get high level, it's like you Q in, you're going to get Q'd back by Melio or, or CC'd by Cassante or Gragas. And double Marksman, I think, you know, is such high DPS. I think Cloud9 can kite back and kill Frontline against Golden Guardians comp, personally. Ooh. I think it's, it's all about the engage from Golden Guardians. Blabber continuing to step forward here, slow down, Culling coming out. The Lamb's Respite is forced. They no longer have the get out of jail free card here for Cloud9. Losing that one with only 10 seconds till the Drake. Big team fight tool down, but it also costs Licorice's ulti. Golden Guardians grouping up. River's gotta be careful. He doesn't want to enter in too quickly here. Already only at two thirds oh, HP. MS wow. has not been seen yet, but he will be spotted by the ward once he tries to come around. Golden Guardian's gonna see that now. River leading the way in with a counter strike. Stixa is gonna back it up and try to find some damage onto the big man in the mid lane. As Golden Guardians now get engaged on. Zven's taken low and Stixa's already killed. Him. Fudge tries to find his way into the back while well, River takes out of an S on the side. Licorice drops, and we got ourselves a 3v3. Oh, Sidesnackers oh, going in, and that's what I was talking about. He always shows up. Berserker finds his moment, and he finds a triple kill. Blabber was seeing the future in that fight <laughs> with his ability to dodge the charm over the wall. But really, this wasn't necessarily a front to back fight. It actually looked like Golden Guardians had pushed them off the zone. And when Zven gets blown up, you think it might actually turn in the favor of Golden Guardians. But here, Blabber Berserker gets so much damage off in the corner. And watch Blabber right now, so sucking nice back that. behind that charm. I believe Berserker had given yep. him vision yep. of Gory over the wall, so he was able to see the cast. But they're getting barren off of this. I mean, that was really nicely done. And Zven kind of just laughing. He's like, oh, support is useless, dude. <laughs> I was dead. <laughs> you win anyway. I mean, the reality is that the beginning of the fight did look pretty promising for Golden Guardians. But then you realize who are the targets that are threatened and who are the targets that are actually free firing. Yeah. Blabber and Berserker were never touched. And if the double marksman is free hitting, you are just not going to win the fights. And that is what Golden Guardians are really gonna have to deal with. They have to have a really good engage and it has to be pressuring Berserker and Blabber to really make something happen. Because even with a free pick onto Zven, which did help them tremendously, it's just not really making a difference. And now they've got to deal with Cloud9 having this Baron buff for the next two and a half minutes. Yes, Golden Guardians got themselves a Drake as a consolation prize, but that's not worth a whole lot. Blabber also on five stacks now with the Kindred. He's got that bonus Ooh, range. Six. He's right where he needs to be. Number six, he improved it mid-sentence. The man is keeping the tempo up, and Cloud9 wants to grab as much gold as they can from this Baron. Licorice and River leading the way as they try to force C9 back. River with a counter strike, nice. but now he's got to be careful because Fudge has found the flank, and River's about to die. They gun him down, and if that goes golden to prevent the same. Licorice tries to oh, flash Fudge. away. Fudge is in the middle of everybody. Licorice, who he, they're all That's dead. The Golden Guardians are gone. The game's done. Cloud9 
just won it. Oh my God, Cloud9 gonna knock down Golden Guardians in the season over to here. Two fights back to back is all it took. It was actually not a slow game. Flowers, we said it was a slow game in 12 minutes. It was not a slow game. The last five minutes have been crazy. Cloud9 take him down. Turns out when you give the reigning MVP the best champion in the game and then let him free fire in the team fights, the Nexus falls fast. Cloud9 open up summer split with a dub. How quickly did that game end? Like 26 42. Thank you. It was 21 <laughs> minutes in when it was two kills to one. Three kills to one, something like that. Something like yeah. that. And then we see Three eight kills, one. a Baron, an extra team fight, and a win for Cloud9. That's going to bring their average game time well below their spring split average. Yeah. So they waited for their power spikes. They got the fights when they needed, and they just ended the game. Yeah, I mean, it's just two back-to-back -back fights that they crushed through. That's really all it takes. One fight got from the Baron, and if you win a team fight near the enemy base with the Baron, that is it. That's lights out. Game over. Flabber got so far ahead. Uh, the double marksman comp with Melio, I think it's really nice tech. I thought that yeah. uh, the Arden sensor rush was really, really smart. It's it's just very difficult, I think, for Golden Guardians to really make things happen against this composition. To me, like, Melio is New Age Janna. It's just a better Janna than, than like, mm. almost like what that would be if it was designed today. It's so difficult to hard engage. It's like, yes, I can kind of see the thought process of, of Counter-Strike making you really tanky against this double marksman, but in reality, what is the Jax actually going to get done in the fight? You jump in with Counter-Strike, they kite back. Even if you have stun, there's AoE cleanse heal from Melio. You're going to get queued backwards. You're getting peeled by Gragas, peeled by Cassante. And we can see in this fight, it is just this engage from Fudge coming over the side, catching multiple members there. And if Golden Guardians don't have access to those marksmen, there's nothing happening. And Blabber throughout this whole fight, he had cozy campfire. He's just stepping forward, free hitting the entire time. Oh. Sticks A is pressured, and Berserker then finds his moment as he always seems to on Zeri. And also, he had 3,000 health when he did that. So he felt pretty yeah. safe flying over yeah. the wall to get a point blank R. Really? exquisite team fighting down the stretch by Cloud9. I think a pretty poor game overall from MNS. Pushed in the majority yeah, yeah. of the time. He actually missed his flash uh, body, body slam, slam in that exact clip. So uh, when I think about this game, I'd say Golden Guardians needed to capitalize more early when Gory was winning mid lane very substantially. They were pushing bottom lane in, taking plates up 20 CS. Didn't get early dragon stacking. Didn't get early Rift Herald. Could not accelerate the game. And then the team fighting of Cloud9 just turned on and gave him the win. Well, a reminder for our fans at home, the MasterCard exclusive pre-sale for the LCS Championship tickets went live earlier today and is already almost sold out. MasterCard card holders are currently able to purchase these tickets and priceless experience packages before the general public. The packages include behind the scenes tours, exclusive swag, premier seating, and more. And they are available on Priceless.com. Calm. Now with everything wrapped up here in game number one, we're going to join Mark and Blabber on stage for the Verizon post-game interview. Uh, thank you very much. Captain Flowers, I'm standing by with Victorious Blabber, picking up their first win of the season, picking up where they left off. How are you and the team feeling? Do you still feel like the best team in the LCS? Who do you think your biggest competition is going to be? Oh, we're feeling pretty good. I think that we were able to take a little bit of a break from MSI, but you know, not too much of a break. And then um, we just kind of came back, got back into the swing of things, I guess, for LCS. And uh, I'm feeling confident for the split. As for our biggest rival, I guess I would say it's FlyQuest. I think still FlyQuest. Yeah, I think they'll probably be um, our toughest opponents to split. So you spoke about getting back in the swing of things. There was a huge meta shift, kind of, with the big patch that came in, bigger than usual, at least for the midseason. Uh, you played Kindred with Triforce. Can you speak to me about some of the patch changes that you're feeling as a jungler? Well, for our team specifically, this is a great patch for us. You know, Yumi, yeah. Milio, that's... that's <laughs> Spends bread and butter, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> this is a great patch for us. Uh, Freak doesn't like us, so he's nerfing us next one, but... Unlucky. Unfortunately. But, um, yeah, Kindred's a champ I've always really liked. I think Kindred is extremely strong right now, um, especially with Milio. And I was happy we were able to play today. Cool, you guys definitely look good. You spoke a little bit, this will be my last question, about the weird start to the season, obviously the extra two week break. Has that changed how you have approached the start to the season? Because often there's like this MSI hangover thing people talk about. Were you guys able to get more time to recover? Like how is the start to the split been for you? Uh, I would definitely say like we were, I wouldn't say like, I don't know about my team, but I was a bit uh, tired, I would say from after MSI, but um, we were able to take like an extra three days off, I would say, uh, along with however long we took at the beginning. Um, and yeah, it's just giving us more time to, I guess, prep because all the other teams were able to, well, besides Golden Guardians, I guess, were yeah. able to scrim on 
the patch with Melio and Yumi enabled for probably like a couple weeks longer than us since we right. were playing at MSI. So it definitely let us catch up a bit. And yeah, I guess it, overall it was probably good for us. Nice. Uh, anything you want to say before we go to break to the fans? No, uh, thanks to everyone who came out today. And thanks for supporting us. Yeah, thank you guys so much for coming out. That's going to do it for my interview with Blabber. Congratulations again on the win. We're going to TL and TSM on the other side of this break. See you then. <laughs> thank you. Oh, forcing the flash out of M&S, but River flashes over the wall to keep him chased down. Liquorice ready to fire the Orn Horn from downtown. And Golden Guardians now get engaged on. Zen's taken low and Stick stays over to kill him. Fudge tries to find his way into the back while River takes out M&S on the side. Liquorice drops, and we got ourselves a 3v3. Sunsucker's oh, going in, and that's what I was talking about. He always shows up. Berserker finds his moment, and he finds a triple kill.